you say what? Oh, for Christ's sake. It's the VMX Show, Season 7. Hey now, everybody. This is Necro VMX, and welcome to the VMX Show. And this is Season 7, Episode 8. So we're getting... Getting near the end, if you remember, there are 12 episodes per season. I've had a pretty good week. Um, a lot of things going on, uh, especially over at Kazarth Studios. And I've been playing uh, Bioshock Infinite. A couple of people ask me, well, have you beaten it yet? And they want to talk about the ending and all this. And I'm like, of course I haven't beaten it yet. Are you out of your damn mind? It's only been out a week. I, You know, I would love, I would love to have all the time in the world to sit on my ass and play the Xbox. But it's just not a reality. I want you guys to uh, realize something here. Take a 24-hour day. Now, subtract the time that I'd be working. Now, that's two jobs, not just one. And now subtract the time that I would be sleeping. Subtract the time that I would be eating. And then subtract the time that I would be making YouTube videos and things like that. And then subtract the time that... I spend, you know, in the bathroom or whatever, you know, just doing random tasks like that or, or housework or whatever. And then subtract the time I spend with Julie and, and then subtract the time I spend with my friends and you're very left with very little. So, you know, I mean, uh, I'm lucky if I get like an hour a day to play Bioshock. Um, I'm, you know, most of my gaming is done on my days off, so... You know, and this is my night off. This is my night off, and I'm sitting here doing the VMX show, so I could be playing it now. Just want to let you guys know that. Uh, stop asking me about that. When I, you know what? I'll I'll let you know when I finish it. I'll let you know on the show. It'll certainly be before the end of the uh, the um, season. Uh, another thing that went on. I did replace my Xbox 360 this week. I went over to GameStop, and um, yeah, I uh, I still have the old one, but I'm going to bring it back and, and, and uh, sell that to them. Uh, multiple reasons why. I, I wanted to get the slim model. Um, I had like the original Pro model, which is the 20 gig one. And this one's 250 gigs, which is a lot more, uh, less prone to overheating, obviously. Not that mine was broken, but it did occasionally overheat. And it's just, that's, you know, when you do get the chance to sit there for a few hours and play, you don't want to have to worry about that, you know? So I got that, and that was pretty cool. Um, I did get two games that came out with it. Um, it came with Darksiders 2, which is cool. I've never played the original Darksiders, but that did look like a pretty cool game, so I kept that one. The other game that I came up with uh, was Batman Arkham City, and I was actually going to give it away, uh, give it away, because I don't have... I, I already have it. I didn't need another copy, and since it was a download copy, um, you know, Darksiders 2 was physical, but Batman was a download copy, so... Um, what I, what I was going to do is I was going to give it away on the show. But then I offered it to my friends and co-workers first, and one of them took it. So there you have it. Um, I do have a month of free Xbox Live Gold, except I don't know where the card is, the, the, the redemption thing. I put it somewhere, and I couldn't find it. I was just looking for it. So if I find it before next week, I'll give that away on the show. I'll do like a little little... Not quite a contest, but like a maybe something like first to comment gets it or something like that. So you guys will get a shot at that. Let's go over the questions and comments from last week's show. Uh, let's see. Uh, starting off, we have Dark Ghost eight thirty one just posted poopy. There is really something wrong with your brain that you wasted the. Well, I want to say five seconds, but judging from the uh, display of intelligence, I would say it's probably more like three minutes to type the word poopy there so i don't know why you did that um you're an idiot and uh please don't waste my time with shit like that uh let's see kakarot 1436 says yeah i have pretty much the same opinion on black and death metal i only like a few black metal bands but i do like a bunch of death metal bands also i would like to know what death metal bands are your favorite um i used to be really really into opeth uh not so much anymore because the last two albums been a little weird. Uh, Watershed was okay, but not great. It was definitely a big leap down from Ghost Reveries, and then they released Heritage, which I hated. And uh, it also had um, it had no elements of death metal or really any metal in it whatsoever, which is part of the reason that I didn't like it. Um, so uh, Death, obviously, they're the greatest. Bolt Thrower, um, you know, bands like that. 
there's there's really a lot of death metal bands that I like. I just wanted to name a few because you said favorites, and not you know uh, Morbid Angel is a really great one. Um, Celtic Frost uh, they tend to go more avant garde metal, but because of that they they hit on every genre, so they have done some some death metal stuff. Um, Bloodbath is great, especially uh, the more recent stuff. So there you go. All right, well, um, hmm, Steam just went and fucked itself on me. That's interesting. Okay, it just it just unfucked itself. Okay, so this guy, uh, the Nintendo pimp, dude, what is with your fucking avatar? That is scary. You need to change that because when people see that, they're gonna run in the opposite direction. Unless that's really what you want to. Uh, if that's what you want, you want people to run in the other direction. But that is a scary mullet faced jerk off guy they and i've seen that before i've seen a bunch of people who had that as their avatar and it's just like don't do that that's just creepy but anyway he says i am oh he's replying to someone else i keep telling you people not to do this but uh there you go well well I'll let me read the original comment uh hi elven gamer said what do you think about the no wave no wave no wave genre bands like the screamers and theoretical girls i find these bands interesting at the very least i have no idea what you're talking about i've never heard of no wave i've never heard of either of those bands and i don't know i kind of don't want to so i'm moving on savage broadcast says good stuff necro may i ask do you buy rent or stream your movies and secondly besides bond and stephen king what are other books you've read? I, I don't, you know, getting into all the books I've read, I mean, that would take years. I don't want to really get into that too much. I'll read anything as long as it's a good story. Um, okay, as for the movies, um, lately it's been renting them. I, I, I'll rent them through the cable company's on-demand service, and you just watch it as many times as you want for, like, you know, I think like a week or something. And, and uh, it's very cheap. It's like it's like four dollars, and Steam's fucking. I think my internet is actually fucking out. Let's see if I have any service here. It's actually one a.m. Yeah, yeah. It's one a.m. as I'm recording this, and occasionally at one a.m., what my cable company does is they they upgrade things real quick. So for anywhere from a few seconds to a few minutes, the whole, entire cable tends to cut out because I guess they do it at night because they think nobody's using it at night, but. I mean, I, I, I'm using it at night. <laughs> That's when I'm up. But, um, I don't know, I guess when else are they going to do it, but whatever. Okay, let's see. Alex Shannon says, sorry about that. Comments aren't really my thing. Okay. Um, Aloda115 says, glad to hear you read Stephen King's books. I, lo- I love reading his Salem's Lot novel, a classic one indeed, along with it. Oh yeah, yeah, those are both very good. Um, you know, Aloda is interesting. Aloda is um, one of the super fans of her, uh, from Kasara Studios, and uh, she's just like a, a complete maniac for Chronicles of a Dark Lord, which is something I do appreciate. I, I, I gotta ask you, since you're listening to the show, Aloda, I, I gotta, I, I've just been really, actually, all of us at Kasara Studios have been really kind of fascinated by you, um, in the sense that we're, we're just like wondering who you are because. Um, you leave a lot of comments, and and we just have never been able to figure anything out about you. So you know what? Why don't you why don't you drop us a line? Tell us a little bit about yourself, because everybody because our studios kind of wants to know. Let's see. S Serpent Twenty One says, "Dear Necro, how do you feel about South Park seasons now being ten episodes long in one block instead of two seven episode blocks like before? I hope it means we'll get some real good episodes like the Coon Trilogy and less garbage with characters like Towley." Oh, I see. My internet just kicked back in. Oh, it didn't take very long. Well, um, you know, I I gotta say the two block seasons drove me crazy. Um, it really did. I wish that they could just you know do more than ten, but I understand you know they they, they do the whole Book of Mormon thing and and the you know they they're trying to branch themselves out a little bit more and they have to cut back somewhere. I just you know um, I love South Park, but the thing is, um, out of the fourteen episodes that you would normally get. You know, ten of them would be like really great episodes, and then like two of them would be okay episodes, and then like another two would be like crap episodes. You know, there's always at least one really really bad one per season, so hopefully it'll cut down on that. So I'm I'm I, the two separate blocks though, having like season thirteen part one, season thirteen part that drove me crazy. So I'm glad they're not doing that anymore. I hope though that um that doesn't mean that we're waiting a full year between seasons though if they keep it at 10 episodes and then take six months off and then do 10 episodes and then take six months off 
that would be, I think, a good medium um, between the two extremes. Okay, Uber McPhail Sauce posted something in German, and really, I mean, really, I, I gotta sit here and translate this. I'm lucky, uh, well, you're lucky, I don't really care, but that my internet is now back up and I can actually go ahead and translate this. I, I hate when people do this kind of shit. Uh, he just said, um, I'm gonna read it in German first. Heute habe ich erschlagen ein Seehund Baby und das das Rollfleisch zu Metal gessen. Which means, today I killed a baby seal and ate lunch at the raw meat. I get, yeah, he ate it raw. Um, that's, okay, sure, whatever, man. Whatever floats your boat. Uh, no one too special uh, leaves me some nice numbered questions. Let's see. Hi again, Nicker. Number one, what if birds weren't singing but actually screaming because they're scared of heights? That would be awesome. I, I mean, yeah. The only problem is they, 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 um, they do it when they're on the ground, too. So there's got to be a different reason that they're screaming. Maybe it just really sucks to be a bird, and they just got to really scream like all the time. Like, oh, God, being a bird sucks. Although I think being a bird would kind of be cool because you get to fly, so I don't know. It's interesting. Number two, on a more serious note, sequel versus prequel. Yeah, how did you manage? Okay, how did you manage to spell? Not only did you spell sequel and prequel wrong, but you spelled them differently. Like I just want to, I want to point this out to people. Sequel he spelled S E Q U A L. It should be E L, not A L. But then you would think if he thinks sequel is spelled with an A-L, then he would also think that prequel is spelled with an A-L, but instead he put I-L. So actually prequel like that with the I-L at the end, it sounds like some sort of like medicine, almost like NyQuil. Um, wow, I'm just going to read the rest of this. Do you think the first game in a series should have enough information to not need a prequel? Or do you find it a cheap way to milk money when a franchise is successful? Cough, Skyward Sword, cough. Um, well, you know, like, you, you can talk about Skyward Sword. Now, the thing is, like, I mean, Link to the Past was a prequel, and then Ocarina of Time was a prequel, and then Minish Cap was a prequel to everything, and now Skyward Sword. And it's, it's you know, like, you could say that it's a cheap way to milk money when a franchise is successful, but how is it different from doing a sequel? Um, like personally, I you know I, I would I would be um, happy if the Zelda series would go forward rather than backwards. They have this whole thing about going backwards, and I've pointed this out in videos before because the people at Nintendo like to say that the reason that they keep making prequels is because oh we're running out of spots on the timeline and then this and that. And I'm like, well, why not add to the end of it? But um, you know, it it, it is kind of silly to say that prequels or sequel. I mean. Like, they're, they're the same thing, basically. It's just one going in one direction, one going in the other. Now, um, you seem to target prequels specifically, but there's nothing wrong with them. I mean, it, it's, it's like... It, it, I didn't like Skyward Sword. I just want to point that out. But I don't think it, it's a cheap way to milk money. Because if it was cheap, it would have been cheap. It wouldn't have been a big-budget game like that that they obviously poured you know, millions of dollars and, and tens of thousands of man-hours into. It's kind of a silly comment. Let's move on. Number three, he says, this is a more personal question. Do you think parents should discipline their kids other than stern voices, timeouts, and taking away iPhones? Well, well, first off, you're, there's no reason for your kids to have iPhones. As a matter of fact, uh, children should not have cell phones. Um, th un until they're at the age where they're out without any kind of supervision, that's when they should start having the cell phone. Um, but... I just want to say that um, how people take care of their kids and how they discipline their kids is really up to the kid. It's really, you know, like certain things work with certain kids and certain things don't work with certain kids. I'm very much against um, hitting kids because I think that it's uh, it doesn't help anything in the long run. It's, it's a short-term fix that causes long-term problems. But at the same time, there are a few kids who are so spoiled and bratty they could use a good pop, not like an abusive one, but a good pop just to get their attention and let you know you mean business because sometimes yelling doesn't have any effect. I do think that, you know, like out of those, you know, like, I mean, like the timeout is kind of a silly thing. Um, who gives a shit? 
you know what I mean? So, but I mean, taking away, you know, the privileges, I think that's the best and most effective thing, but uh, you got to be smart about it. So I'm going to move on here. Oh, he has another question. He left another comment. says, hello again. I forgot one question. Have you ever had a question or comment that made you question humanity or how we ended up the way we did? Uh, just about once or twice every episode that happens. So <laughs> there you go. Okay, the Nintendo Pimp commented again on uh, Avatar. Uh, Lol, points for not reading the full question. But seriously, I was wondering if Microsoft would ever release a portable gaming system. I doubt it will be due to. I doubt it will due to the failure of the Zune. Well, the Zune doesn't have anything to do with. All right, I'm gonna. Uh, also, was wondering if you ever a Nintendo Power reader. I, I did read some Nintendo Power back on the day. I wasn't a subscriber, but I would pick up an issue. Um, you know, whenever I had the chance. Um, Nintendo, you know, Nintendo has a pretty firm grasp on it, and Sega, uh, no, Sega, what the fuck's wrong? Well, Sega in the past had struggled against them. Other companies had struggled against them. Sony struggles against them currently. Uh, you know, they're, they're doing all right without a portable gaming system. I don't think we really need the whole, like, portable Xbox thing. XDialga361445 XS, excitement fills the air as I watch this video. Okay. Glad to know it. Um, Bolt the Super Dogs Tube said, You miss me? You read my list on two episodes of List Critics by mistake. Well, what do you want? We're human. Uh, Levite0401 says, Hey, Necro, I recently got a Nintendo 64 emulator and was wondering what games you would point me towards. As always, great show. Well, I don't know what kind of games you like. I mean, if you don't know like what the Nintendo 64 classics are at this point, just go to Google and type in like top 10 N64 games and pick whatever feels good to you, you know what I mean? Uh, Puffness says, why no one like Ouija? He didn't put Ouija, he put Ouija. Dude, you know, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I'm moving on here. The Amazing Tony Rose says, hey, Necro, loving the show as usual. So I bought Bioshock Ultimate Rapture Edition, which includes Bioshock 1, 2, and all the DLC, because I'm cheap and can't afford Bioshock Infinite just yet. Anyway, I'm playing the first Bioshock, and I'm loving it a lot. The only problem is I've always been a nervous person, and I scare easily. So I have to stop playing after an hour or so before I freak out. Haha, <laughs> 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 still, it's great. It's been a long time since anything scared me like that. Yeah, the Bioshock games are pretty freaking freaky. Um, and, you know, you would think that Bioshock Infinite would be less freaky because so much of it is, you know, like out in the open, and it's not in this oppressive underwater environment, and there's, like, people walking around. It's not a dead city you know, but there's still some really freaky moments there. Uh, my last comment is from Insane Wayne 253 says, were you ever a fan of really hot spices or chilies on foods? For instance, anything involving, uh, anything that involved ghost pepper, the Trinidad scorpion maruga. I've never tried those, but I am a fan of spicy food. The thing is it has to have some flavor to it. It has to, you know, some people like, like the stuff of the ghost pepper and all that. It's, it's sort of just pure capsaicin and, uh, it's basically just something to fire off your pain receptors, and there's really like not much enjoyment you're going to get out of something that pow that powerful. Um, you know, like I mean, like at least with like something like a habanero, um, it's still you know like it's very spicy, but it tastes good. So there's like you know it, it it's it's got to have a, a flavorfulness to it. Um, it's not just about oh look how manly I am. I I eat fire and shit blood. You know, it's it's about enjoying yourself. So. I don't know. I mean, if I would really want to try something like the ghost peppers or, you know, you know, whatever other kind of Brazilian insanity peppers these people come up with, cultivating, you know, these like 16 million unit Scoville things, you know, it, it's insane. It, it, you're out of your mind, I think, to do something like that. I mean, really, uh, it, it's it's like basically, why don't you just hit yourself with a hammer? Because that's, that's you know, all you're doing is causing pain. Um... But I do like spicy food, and I do like my spices very hot. I'm a big fan of like you know like vindaloo and and things like that. So, but but it's got to taste good. It can't just be something that's just going to rip the skin off your tongue. It's got to be something that I'm also going to enjoy, you know, on more than one level. So, you know, there you go. That being said, that's it for questions and comments. Um, I don't have a guest, so it will be kind of a shorter show. But I do have news to talk about. I did want to talk about the Ouya. This is the uh, the latest doomed for failure console that's coming out. It will be coming out on June 4th for $99. It is the little tiny Android-powered console. You can get it on June 4th 
in United States, Canada, and the UK for $99. And um, the people who funded the Kickstarter are getting them already, from what I understand. So uh, there you go. I, I don't think this is going to be a success. I think that, yeah. I, I, I don't... <laughs> I mean, I don't know what kind of games they're going to get on it, but, um, I mean, if you look at, like, the Ouya's website, it's like, it looks like there's a really impressive list of games, but if you read the fine print, it's actually a list of games that could be on it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, you know, I don't know. It, it kind of reminds me of a joke. I'll tell you the joke real quick. It, it's a terrible joke, but... Is these uh, these poor inner city kids just hanging around, and uh, you know, the front porch, somebody's place, and uh, one of the kids' dad gives him ten dollars and says, "Have a good time with it." And uh, so he goes, grabs the ten dollars, and he runs off to the store, and all his friends follow. They're all excited. They got ten dollars. Going to do something fun, you know. And the kid comes out with a bag, and they're all like gathered around him, and uh, and uh, he pulls out a box of tampons, and they're like, "The fuck." We were supposed to have a good time with that money. What'd you buy that shit for? And he says, no, see here on the box, it says you can go swimming, you can go uh, diving, you can go horseback riding. You know, it's like, uh, you know, obviously if you, you go and you put on a tampon into, a, you know, one of your orifices, that doesn't mean that, ooh, look at me, I'm swimming, I'm horseback riding, I'm having a great time. It's just a list of things you can do, you know, which is a silly thing, but... Like I said, it wasn't a very good joke, but it did kind of remind me of that when you look at the Ouya's website. It's uh, it, it's kind of scary because it's like they're suckering in pe. I think they're suckering in people with this these this really impressive looking list of games, and people think these are going to be like launch titles or these have been announced. No, nothing's been announced. I mean, it's just lists of games that could possibly run on that system. And like I said, I think it's very very deceptive. Good news for fans of Terraria, there will be a home version coming, well I say home versions, a uh, console version, rather a portable version is coming to the PlayStation Vita, and that's happening sometime this summer. Um, you know, that bit game started off on Steam, it was on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, they will be a Vita version. Um, I'm not sure about any kind of details, or you know, like whether it's going to interface with the PlayStation 3 version, but there you have it. If you're a Terraria fan, and you're in that tiny sliver of the v the Venn diagram that crosses over the Vita owners, which is a very small circle anyway, hey, there you fucking go, right? There you fucking go. Just wanted to figure I'd, I'd mention that. Okay, so I do have some, some news about some upcoming games, especially ones from Bioware. There's a new engine out there called the Frostbite 3 engine. And um, despite initial word from e Electronic Arts, who we can never trust ever again, an official press release has noted that Dragon Age 3 Inquisition will be using Frostbite 3, not Frostbite 2, which is what they originally said. And also the next Mass Effect game will also be using the engine. And of course, Battlefield 4 will be using that. Uh, Dragon Age 3 will be coming out sometime late this year and i can't wait for it i can't wait for it big fan of the dragon age series so there you go okay um i have also a list of winners here uh from the game developers choice awards and this is cool because it's you know it's like the people's choice except it's game developers choice so here we are um i'm going to give you the winners here best downloadable game went to journey developed by that game company. Best Narrative went to The Walking Dead from Telltale Games. Best Visual Arts went to Journey from that game company. The Ambassador Award went to Chris Melisinos. Best Technology went to Far Cry 3 uh, from Ubisoft. The Best Game Design went to Journey from that game company. Best Handheld or Mobile Game went to The Room from Fireproof Studios. Best Audio went to Journey from that game company. The Pioneer Award went to Steve Russell. The Best Debut went to FTL Faster Than Light from Subset Games. The Innovation Award went to Journey from that game company. The Audience Choice Award went to Dishonored from Arcane Studios. The Lifetime Achievement Award went to Dr. Ray Muzika and Dr. Greg Zeschuk. And Game of the Year was, you guessed it, Journey 
from that game company. So that the Journey, big winner, just basically swept out of every category that it was in. Um, six out of the 11 prizes there. That's sort of a big deal there. So they had a pretty good taste there at <laughs> GDC. Gotta say, I'm impressed by the uh, the games that were there. It wasn't just a bunch of AAA stuff. Lots of, lots of love to the indie titles. So there you have it. Okay, so let's see. Uh, moving on here. Now, I have another awards to announce. And this is from IGF 2013. And that was held in California. And I'm going to give you the awards here. And also, the, these were given cash prizes, which is pretty great. Uh, so the Excellence in Visual Art Award in $3,000 went to Kentucky Route Zero from Cardboard Computer. The Nuovo Award in $5,000 went to Cart Life from Richard Hoffmeyer. The Excellence in Audio Award in $3,000 went to 140 from Jeb Carlson. The Excellence in Narrative Award in $3,000 went to Cart Life from Richard Hoffmeyer. The Technical Excellence Award in $3,000 went to Little Inferno from Tomorrow Corporation. The Best Student Game Award in $3,000 went to Zineth from Ren, uh, Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. The Audience Award went to FTL Faster Than Light from Subset Games. That also had a $3,000 prize. The Excellence in Design Award in $3,000 went to FTL Faster Than Life for subset games and the Swimus McNally Grand Prize Award in thirty thousand dollars went to Cart Life from Richard Hoffmeyer. Definitely the big winner there. And of course, you know the IGF that's independent awards, so that's why it's all indie games. And that's why I cover it, because I'm an indie game developer myself, so there you go. Okay, now I do have I do have a little bit of news to talk about with PlayStation 4. Um you will be able to use a PSN um, handle, and you will be able to use your real name. So uh, that's what's going on there, as well as the DualShock 4 controller. Uh, I do have a little bit of news there. Apparently, it will charge while the system is in standby mode, which was not possible with the PlayStation 3. Every PlayStation 4 will include a headset in the box, which was another thing the PlayStation 3 did not do. So there you go. Um, oh, I, actually, the ID thing, it, you'll have two identities. So there'll be the, rec the requisite online handle, but true names for friends pulled from Facebook and through true name search on PSN. By default, true names will not be displayed unless you turn them on. So it looks like they're getting some things right, at least. I'm adopting a wait-and-see attitude, especially until we know what the price is going to be, and that's going to be the thing that is going to make or break the PlayStation 4. And from what I've heard, it ain't going to be cheap. It ain't going to be cheap. There will be a third Tomb Raider movie. That's going to be happening, probably due to the success of the new Tomb Raider game. I have no idea um, who's going to be playing, you know, Lara Croft or what's going on. Um, um, uh, obviously, Angelina Jolie is not attached to this. Um, so there you go. She's, you know, she played Lara Croft in the first two movies, um, but that was a while ago, and this is going to be completely from scratch reboot there. So let's just hope it's not Megan Fox, because that would just be terrible. I think that I would throw up in my mouth a little bit. Actually, I think I would throw up a lot. There would be no little bit with that. I would throw up a lot. Some more indie game news for fans of Hotline Miami. And I happen to know quite a few people who are fans of the game. Hotline Miami is getting a sequel. And apparently... It's going to revolve greatly around the 90s. It's going to give you the feel of the 90s, especially the early 90s. Uh, the company, um, Abstraction, is currently porting Hotline Miami to the Vita and is working on the sequel as well. Um, not sure what the title of it is, but you know, there you have it. That's what's going on with Hotline Miami. All right. Um, okay, now there, there were some conflicting reports all this last year. You may have heard news stories saying that the Unreal Engine 4 will not be compatible with the Wii U and that it will not work with it. It's not designed to work with it. Okay, here's what happens. It's not true at all. Actually, it's totally possible to, uh, to run Unreal games, Unreal Engine 4 games on the Wii U. Here is um, a quote from Eng Engadget, who... Um, He's the one that made the comment that I guess people ran away with, you know, and uh, basically 
you know, uh, here's his original comment. He said, our goal for Unreal Engine 4 console-wise is next-gen consoles. That's really what our engines are focused on. If you want to make a Wii U game, we have Unreal Engine 3, and it's powering some of the best games on the Wii U already. So people took that to mean that, oh, the Wii U can't handle Unreal 4. This is what he says. You heard the stupid gaff yesterday about the Wii U. If someone wants to make an Unreal Engine 4 and ship a game on the Wii U, they can. If they want to sl- ship an Unreal Game 4 on the Xbox 360, they could make it happen. So it's not just for next-gen consoles and PCs. It does support Xbox 360. It does support Wii U. I assume PlayStation 3 as well. So there you go. It. Now there you go. Uh, let's see, I have a couple more things at least to talk about. What else do I have to talk about? Okay, alright. Um, okay, now, uh, you might have seen the trailers, uh, already, but the, the new Deus Ex game is coming. And this is, this is an interesting one. It's called Deus Ex Human Defiance, and I have no idea anything about it. Uh, like, what kind of, like, you know, what kind of, um, systems it's going to be, I assume PC and probably all the consoles, but there you have it, and also Deus Ex Human Revolution, which is the previous game, is coming to the Wii U, and there are actually no plans on uh, the additional features coming to other consoles. Also, they are working on a movie, CBS Films is making a movie currently in production based on Deus Ex Human Revolution, but they say it's not a rehashing of the game. I don't know what that means. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, there's also a new Thief co- game coming out, which is uh, a lot of people are calling it Thief 4, but apparently it's just called Thief, which makes many people believe it is a reboot, which is possible. And probable, as a matter of fact, it's probably the best thing that they could do at this point. I talked a little bit uh, last week about the, deduct- the, uh, the new DuckTales game coming from Capcom. Um, you know, and way forward studios who's developing it now. I do have some news. Apparently, there will be a lot more story to this that will answer some unanswered questions that probably nobody really thought to ask. For example, why can Scrooge McDuck breathe on the moon? It will be explained. And speaking of the moon level, why do you fight a giant rat? That's sort of weird. It was like the only thing that was like not from the show. Apparently, that's explained as well. So, a lot of like the kind of like uh, weird or quirky aspects of the game are going to be explained, not that it really needs to, but it's a, you know, they didn't really have to do that. Last news story I want to talk about, Shin Megami Tensei 4 is coming to 3DS, and I can confirm that it is coming to America sometime, I believe, this summer. So that's that's a big deal for fans of the Shin Megami Tensei series. Get your 3DS if you don't already have one. I also did want to talk about um, there were some April Fool's jokes going on around. Um, I, I avoided the internet for most of April Fool's Day. Um, but I can tell you, uh, Reggie Fisame obviously didn't turn into a zombie. The Smash Brothers series is not cancelled. Kazarth Studios is not working on a prequel to Final Fantasy VI. There's no such thing as Catherine II, although I would totally be all over that. You know, there's a bunch of different things going over, you know, around. Um, IGN had some good ones. But yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, so just, you know, if you heard anything really crazy in the last few days or really exciting, you have to... Um, <laughs> You have to uh, just take it with a grain of salt and maybe look at the date that it was posted. So let's go over the sales figures and then end this off so I can spend some time playing Bioshock Infinite for once in my fucking life. All right, let, let's get this done. And by the way, you won't see them. Uh, you won't see Bioshock Infinite on these charts. It did sell really well, but uh, I don't have the figures for that week yet. You know, it's always like about a week delayed. So keep that in mind. So here are the top ten best-selling games. In Japan, we're starting with Japan, for the week ending in March 24th. The number one game was Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon on the 3DS. That sold 287,259 copies. At number two, One Piece Pirate Warriors 2 on the PlayStation 3 sold 274,241 copies. At number three, Pro Yaku Spirits 2013 on the PlayStation 3 sold 104,442 copies. At number four, Pro Yaku Spirits 2013 on the PlayStation Portable sold 80,669 copies. At number five, One Piece Pirate Warriors 2 on the PlayStation Vita sold 
58,776 copies. And number six, Animal Crossing New Leaf on the 3DS sold 58,631 copies. At number seven, Disgaea D2 on the PlayStation 3 sold 54,880 copies. At number eight, Pretty Rhythm My Deco Rainbow Wedding. Yeah, it's really called that. On the 3DS, that sold 33,619 copies. At number nine, Kingdom Hearts on the PlayStation 3 sold 30,284 copies. And at number 10, Atelier Maruru Alchemist of Arlen 3 on the PlayStation Vita, that sold 25,196 copies. Here are the top 10 best selling games for the week ending in March 23rd in Europe. And number one, Gears of War Judgment on the Xbox 360 sold 188,159 copies. At number two, Tomb Raider on the PlayStation 3 sold 48,460 copies. At number three, Sim City for PC sold 44,085 copies. At number four, God of War Ascension on the PlayStation 3 sold 41,763 copies. At number five, Tomb Raider on the Xbox 360 sold 36,905 copies. At number six, The Walking Dead Survival Instinct on the Xbox 360 sold 30,002 copies. At number seven, Monster Hunter Try on the 3DS sold 29,611 copies. At number eight, StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm for PC sold 28,722 copies. At number nine, Monster Hunter Try on the Wii U sold 25,229 copies. And at number 10, Sniper Ghost Warrior 2 on the PlayStation 3 sold 24,905 copies. And here are the top 10 best-selling games for the week ending in March 23rd in the United States. At number 1, Gears of War Judgment on the Xbox 360 sold 454,123 copies. At number 2, God of War Ascension on the PlayStation 3 sold 87,721 copies. At number 3, The Walking Dead Survival Instinct on the Xbox 360 sold 87,666 copies. At number 4, Lego City Undercover on the Wii U sold 76,854 copies. At number 5, Monster Hunter Try on the 3DS sold 45,997 copies. At number 6, The Walking Dead Survival Instinct on the PlayStation 3 sold 45,864 copies. At number 7, StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm for PC sold 45,750 copies. At number 8, Tomb Raider on the Xbox 360 sold 36,224 copies. At number 9, Monster Hunter Try on the Wii U sold 36,068 copies. And at number 10, MLB 13 The Show on PlayStation 3 sold 28,098 copies. So globally speaking, the big winner was Gears of War Judgment, Luigi's Mansion shortly after that, One Piece Pirate Warriors 2, God of War Ascension, Walking Dead, Pro Yaku Spirits 2013, the PlayStation 3 version sold a lot better. Tomb Raider, once again, the PlayStation 3 version was the one that really charted there. Monster Hunter tried, Lego City Undercover, and StarCraft 2. Over for uh, hardware, that's the systems in Japan, uh, the big selling console was the 3DS from Nintendo. That was 75,915 units sold. The PlayStation Vita from Sony, 39,825 units sold. The PlayStation 3 from Sony, 23,219 units sold. The PlayStation Portable from Sony, 12,141 units sold. The Wii U from Nintendo, 10,811 units sold. The Wii from Nintendo, 1,700 units sold. The Xbox 360 from Microsoft, 545 units sold. And the DS from Nintendo, 109 units sold. Over in Europe, the top-selling console was PlayStation 3 from Sony, 37,345 units sold. The 3DS, that's Nintendo, 27,689 units sold. The Xbox 360 from Microsoft, 25,000. 435 units sold. The Wii U from Nintendo, 14,505 units sold. The PlayStation Vita from Sony, 7,398 units sold. The DS from Nintendo, 4,903 units sold. The, uh, <coughs> uh, the PlayStation Portable uh, from Sony, 1,171 units sold. And finally, in America, the big selling console was no surprise, the Xbox 360 from Microsoft, 44,351 of those sold. PlayStation 3, 35,745 units sold. 
the Wii U 29,722 units sold. Kind of a surge for the Wii U in America. I'm glad to see that. The 3DS 26,272 units sold. Uh, what's next here? Oh, the DS, 13,439 units sold. The Wii, 11,844 units sold. PlayStation Vita, 5,586 units sold. And the PlayStation Portable, 764 units sold. So, globally, tallying up everything, the big winner was once again the 3DS. Uh, that should stop coming as a surprise to anybody. PlayStation 3 in second place, Xbox 360 in third place, Wii U in fourth place, Vita in fifth place, Wii in sixth place, PlayStation Portable, and then the DS bringing up the rear. So that being said, there you have it. That's uh, that's everything for this show. If you want to be on the show, come on Skype and let me know. you got to schedule something. You can't just I am in the middle of nowhere and said, okay, let's do this. So, yeah, I just want to mention that and uh, let me know. And if you have a question or a comment and you want me to read it on the show or whatever, leave your question or comment here. Hope you enjoyed it. VMX out.